What is going on guys? It's been a while, you know, since I made a little gaming video. What has it been, two days? Anyway, we're back. We're here. Be sure to check out the Weapon Wheel Podcast. Be sure to check out Planned Xbox on Kids Moves channel. Be sure to check out the Ghost of Tsushima live streams on Jack Moves channel, on BG's channel, on Smooth's channel. I still don't know what's happening on Jimmy's channel. But also be sure to check out the Weapon Wheel Patreon if that's something you want to support. We got the After Dark going on, game streams, as well as other things. But let's get down to business because you know I gotta put my mask on here. Digital Foundry. I don't know what's going on with them. This is kind of a uh, almost two week old tweet, but definitely something I wanted to make a video about. Digital Foundry tweets, here's why we'll still be playing some games at 30 frames per second on next-gen consoles, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. And I agree. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a terrible thing. We should not see any 30 frames per second games on next-gen console. That's just my belief. That's my opinion. That's how I see it. We, we dealt with 30 frames per second games on PS2, on PS3, on PS4. It, it should be over with. It should not even be something we're even talking about. Now look at this. Halo Infinite is trending. We'll check that out later. So let's get on to the article. Next gen consoles, why we still will be playing at 30 frames per second. Plus, see how Marvel's Spider-Man looks running at 60 frames. We'll talk about that later. So going throughout this whole article by Richard, basically some of the key takeaways he's talking about that from the recent PlayStation 5 games revealed beyond how good the key titles looked, and that's the fact that the 30 frames per second console video game is clearly not a thing of the past. In actual fact, the evidence suggests that 30 frames per second performance Target underpins a majority of Sony's impressive first-party offerings, including Horizon, Forbidden West, Ratchet & Clank, Rift Apart, and Marvel's Spider-Man, Miles Morales. And that kind of sucks. I mean, I understand why they are doing this, because you can't sell frame rate. You can only sell visuals, and people want to see how things look. And when people walk around... In the Best Buys or the mall or the Game Stops, they're not going to be playing these demos, or they may be playing them, but more importantly, they want to see the difference in visual fidelity. And not only that, but most last gen games are 30 frames per second, so really you're not seeing anything different by the way the games play and how they input and how they are smooth or not smooth. You're simply seeing the difference in graphical fidelity is what it is, unfortunately. They go on to say, while the PlayStation 5 reveal may have dashed the hopes of gamers looking for an across-the-board 60 frames per second mandate, I don't feel that this is in the end of the story. And forcing studios to adopt 60 frames per second for all projects would be a fundamentally bad idea. Why would that be a bad idea? I don't see why that would be a bad idea to mandate 60 frames per second. Now, if you have a 30 frames per second mode, i.e. Spider-Man, Miles Morales, that's fine. But a 60 frames per second mode should in fact be mandated for every game, period. It, it's 2020. It, it'll be pretty much 2021 by the time these new consoles come out. It should be mandated, yes. Sony goes on to say that Sony's PlayStation 5 showcase strongly suggests that 30 frames per second remains as an enabler for some tremendous visual experiences. And Digital Foundry claims we cannot wait to see more. And that's pretty much what I've been saying. That they are going to be selling graphical fidelity. You cannot sell frame rate to the casual gamer. You can't. The casual looks at the game and see something that either can't be done on the current gen systems or says, hey, why do I need a PS5? Why do I need a Series X? That can be done on an Xbox One and that can be done on a PlayStation 4. You can't sell frame rate. And unfortunately, that is what it is. 
Now moving on into some better news, we have Insomniac Games, who has turned out to be a huge pickup for Sony. Swing through the city like never before on PlayStation 5 with an optional 4K 60 frames performance mode. And as you can already see, people are, they're pretty hyped. Ah, Lord have mercy. Smooth. Smooth, is this really you? Oh my god. And even worse about this, Smooth, I need to know who's holding this camera for you. Was it your kids, or was this your wife? Good god. <laughs> oh man, anyway, anyway. Anyway, Spider-Man Miles Morales on PlayStation 5 has an optional 4K 60 mode. As Digital Foundry reported earlier, most of Sony's PS5 games suggest a 30 frames per second mode and the majority of offerings. Sony kicked off its PS5 reveal, blah, 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 blah. Insomniac is sticking with 30 frames per second performance of the original game, even though the horsepower exists to double the frame rate, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's where we want to be. While the news from Insomniac is welcome, many questions remain. For example, how does performance mode differ alternatively from the equality visual... Oh, they, they need to type properly. Probably no ray tracing for starters. Here's Ledbetter Richard commenting on the news. This is a welcome announcement. Users will be able to lean more into the CPU horsepower of the PS5 to deliver 60 frames per second. It will be interested in seeing what graphical trade-offs were required to deliver the performance mode, especially at 4K resolution is suggested here. Though lowering precision on ray tracing effects or dropping them all together is a possibility, whether this was an original design goal or a response to user feedback isn't clear, but ultimately giving players a choice is how to use the PlayStation 5's power can only be a good thing. And that's exactly what I'm saying. See, I'm confused here because earlier Digital Foundry said forcing studios to adopt 60 frames per second for all projects would be a fundamentally bad idea. But here they're saying that given players the choice can only be a good thing. Digital Foundry, you cannot have it both ways. Mandating a choice is either a good thing or it's a fundamentally bad idea. Pick one or the other. I, I think it's a good thing. You can't play both sides of the coin here. So regardless of how you guys feel, or if you're like Digital Foundry and you contradict yourself direct directly, I feel that it's a good thing and I feel that games should offer whatever mode they want in 30 frames, but they should have to offer and mandate a 60 frames per second performance mode. That's just me. So that's the end of the video today, people. Hope you are enjoying this hot ass day in the summer. Hopefully you guys have pools, beaches, whatever, air conditioning, anything you guys can get your hands on to cool yourselves down because it is hot. Be sure to check out the Welcome to Podcast, people. BG, Jimmy, Jack, Smooth, and myself. Be sure to check out the Welcome to Podcast on Sundays. Be sure to check out the post show on Mondays and enjoy your day.